Hey everybody, how's it? Aloha. Oh, late at night, but I am just bouncing off the walls like a ball in a pachinko game because um, I uh, got some... Wait, hang on for a second, wait a second. Somebody who loves uh, the videos that I do, and I think even Mashuga here, sent me like three bags of Death Wish coffee, and I knew I was in trouble when the, this warning sign here saying... Uh, the world's strongest coffee, and so I had some earlier, and I'm just... <clears throat> so I figured this is a good time to do Meshuggah's Clockwork. Now, this is a um, this is a drum playthrough, and uh, even, even, even though that's what it is, I'm still going to not really... I'm going to watch it, but I'm still going to kind of fade away from the video because it's still, you know, a first-time listen, and I want to, you know, break down the track. But the last time I did it uh, was also a drum playthrough, so... I was still able to do what I do, 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 but the best that I do. But now that I've got this coffee zooming, you know I'll be doing. And so uh, here we go. We've got the Meshuggah Clockworks. Thank you for the support. Any advertisement that runs on this, you know my channel's not monetized. Publishers do a copyright claim so that the band and the record companies can make money, as they should. If you do decide to support me, though, you can always buy me a cup of coffee. And that link will be down below. As a matter of fact, I'll even put a link down below for Death Wish if you just want some of that coffee. <laughs> what is this? 1.30 in the morning. <laughs> Life is good. Mashuga, clockwork. Clockworks. All right. This is a perfect song for me to listen to while drinking this coffee. I'm sweating. I'm sweating just listening to this. Um, even though this is drum cam, you know, as I'm listening to the track, uh, the first thing I want to talk about actually is the guitar tone. Man, that guitar tone is just chugging. It is chunky. It is fat. And it's also, it, it, it's not overly processed. I don't hear really heavy compression on it. Anyhow, I, I don't, you know, if this is your first time with me here, I, I try not to overly geek on certain things. Sometimes I can't help it. Um, this is not going to be an easy first time listen uh, reaction and not go into some, you know, tricky uh, composition and arrangement detail. Um, but without a doubt, this is a complete ex uh, expose in um, polyrhythmic arrangements. And uh, that is where other rhythms are happening. Each instrument is holding actually a separate rhythm pattern, and um, but it's still under the same tempo. And then with that, there's meters. Remember, this is a first time listen, so I'm not that great at having to count out like I've, I've, I've like the other guys who are really good at it. I, I was feeling like there's like a nine four thing happening there, and but then the guitar um, uh, pattern which was a little more in its own pocket. You know, with, with the intense drum work that's going on here with Thomas, I think it's hockey, uh, if I get it right. I think it is. Please be gentle. Correct me if it's not. Uh, he, right now, uh, is the power element and the full 
metal jacket rhythmic joy of what I'm listening to, even though I'm trying not to watch. It's just monstrous what he's doing. And it looks like he's got these giant sticks that he's playing with. It's just, it just looks like he's playing with logs, Lincoln logs. Blah, blah, blah. Um, and he's not even breaking sweat, you know, so that has to do with technique. Um, there was a, a guitar pattern that came in. It was, it was, uh, they were held notes that were right before they kind of squared off. And when I talk about squared off, I'm not talking about they squared off uh, uh, their rhythm and meter changes, but that's when Thomas at least was giving us that four. You may have seen my face go, oh, good, give me a break, man. Give me something to hang on to. And so you, you see him hitting that, you know, straight quarter notes there that gives us, um, you know, something to, like I say, glide. Is, I like to call it the zip line, the center of, you know, the divining rod of, okay, here, there's the one, kind of. Um, and then, of course, the growling, the singer, um, sounds fantastic in the pocket. I don't know what they're saying. I don't have lyrics in front of me. But I had to stop because I, I was, like, getting all, like, as I'm sure you are, for this fine Sunday morning, grateful day to be thankful for Mashuga. <laughs> All right, let's go back a little bit. Let's go forward. Sorry, I just got to say, I love that guitar riff they were just playing right through there. That's some slick guitar riff stuff's going on there. When you're sitting there and you're sliding or bending the strings to get the sounds, which I believe in the last Mushuga video I did, I also was like, are they bending into their pitches? So because I've never seen them play live or anything, it's just such a, it's just such a sick technique. And it really, for, the, for this kind of music and stuff, it works so well. Sorry, I just goobered for the guitar player. Here. Ready, ready. Another super cool thing that just was happening is that Thomas's snare was the actual was uh, in unison with the um, guitar chugging, and in most instances, it's the other way around where the kick would be, you know, in unison with the guitar chugs and the bass. They were all in unison, but it was the snare. And to me, with that higher with with the snare uh, accents on that, gave it another sense of. Um, in your face that rhythm was really just just a little bit more of just like that kind of a punch in the teeth kind of vibe there oh shit this coffee's good <laughs>
when they get into that pattern and you know you just I'm really trying to like just listen to the song and and just let it move me but there's the the intensity of the arrangement I, I could see why like I'm too old to you know really give you know the head uh, the head banging going there and and you just can't help but want to just light one off but you know you could feel you could feel where the tempo is you know whatever it is it does lock in us viscerally we can detect even though we don't know that it's the one or the three or the two or the four or whatever it is we can get we we kind of can detect the the tempo and there are signals of that in different elements of, of the uh, arrangements here. I mean signals of it. And what I mean by that is, obviously, with Thomas doing what he's doing, like I said before, he's like, you know, at least in this song, um, the guy to watch, you know, the, 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 the performance um, power play. So his kind of give you a little bit of it is when he's doing like this, right, on the hi-hats during that period. But then when this guitar phrasing came in, which is really, which is with this kind of digital delayed flange kind of psychedelic sound that was ringing out there, even though his phrasing had uh, some meter change in it, the it, it, at least it sounded like it, uh, the tempo of what he was playing was very straight. You know, I'm I don't, I don't know what the notes are, but I'm just trying to relay the essence and the feeling of that was just a little sprinkle of normal, you know, a little sprinkle of normal tempo that we somehow latch onto. So obviously, if you're watching this and you're a musician like me, a composer, arranger, and stuff like this, uh, and you have some element of musicianship in you. You kind of understand what I'm saying. If you're just the valued pure listener, of which you know how I always say, I wish, I wish, I wish I wasn't inflicted as a composer. Afflicted, I mean. Um, and you enjoy this, you really. This is just absolutely mental for you. Just so that you know, it's okay that you can't find that one. But if you, I, I'll bet you, if I went into a concert and watched them perform this, I'll bet you I, I'd watch a lot of the, the guys who are headbanging in tempo whether they know music or not and where to find it just because there's a hidden message of it in there. Whoa, hidden message, sorry. All right, guys, let me go back a little bit. Here we go.
All right, I gotta stop it right there. They just did that for like two minutes and that was just a power driven riff. But why I'm stopping, <coughs> excuse me, now I'm losing my voice. Why I'm stopping is, remember how I said the other phrasing, how Thomas was accenting uh, the riff on that with the snare? That was the accent. He did a double double here for me. It's like, oh, 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 I see what you did. At the beginning of that, that whole thing, at the first half of that, or maybe the first two thirds, that was accented with the kick. And then the last third, they flipped it. The kicks went actually pretty straight, but with his snare, he followed that with the, um, with the snare. Yeah, actually, he followed that with the snare. He flipped that. And I caught that, and then that, that, those little intricate things, just the simplicity of switching something like, like that out can completely change the whole essence of, of an arrangement composition so many different ways. But the fact that, uh, and also that's, I, 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 in, my, in a million years, uh, I, I could never play drums like that, and, and I don't know how long other drummers practice, like how long to get half as good as this, but... Um, just to manage that it's in of itself its own its own sense of genius um, I don't once again I don't want to not pay any um, uh, uh, homage to the vocalist um, though this is a, a monumental instrumental piece that's going on here um, well not an instrumental piece but a, a, a deliverance of in intense rhythmic uh, composition the one the one safety net for me as a listener, first time listening to it, is actually the singer, is a safety net for me. And what I mean by that is, is while all this is going on, coffee driven or not, when he comes in, that's kind of like the, the, a little bit of the pressure steamer, just for me, it's like, all right, he comes in and he's filling in, he's giving me a sense of like, um, uh, what's, I can't find the word, find the word for me. Type it in there. Find the word is, but um, um, that's that. And, and of course, the growling. We already know he's absolutely genius at that. But nonetheless, I, I do look forward to when he comes back in because sometimes that's where I will feel at times he might be the one that's coming in on the one. You know, it, it's so hard. You know, first listen like this. I mean, and I'm all I'm perspired. All right, here we go. You know, and he just he just actually stopped that like, hey, can somebody just get me a little glass of water? I'm good. Can we do it again? You want to do it again? That's what it looked like when he stopped. It was like he was like, uh, yeah, if you want to do another take, we can. I mean, he, whatever. One thing I want to bring to attention just on that last little um, uh, bit that I played. The one thing that a lot of times drummers do that we do not key into uh, unless we put a focus into it is keeping the hi-hat. He was um, holding the hi-hat in eighth notes. So if, if this is a tempo, one, two, three, four, uh, for those of you who don't know music, eighths would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Well, if you go back and watch that last little bit, that last minute and a half, look at his hi-hat. 
even though he's not hitting it because he's doing all this stuff, but he's keeping his hi-hat in eighths, you know, because it has a foot pedal, right? So you can open and close the hi-hat. And, and for many reasons, uh, not only just for the drummer to be keeping himself squared off, that is such a subtle nuance to uh, drumming that is actually so important. It is just as sick as ghost notes. Uh, for those of you who know what ghost notes are, you know what they are. If you don't know what a ghost note is, a lot of times you'll see drummers, obviously there's no ghost notes here, but when they'll hit the snare on the principal beat, there'll be little smaller uh, strokes, you know, on the snare. Anyhow, uh, I, I digress a little bit, but I just didn't want, I wanted to bring that to your attention. <sighs> yeah, this, this, I, I don't know if, I, if I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> This coffee just got me roped, and I figured, you know, why not? I mean, right before I did the video, I thought, well, I'm up. I might as well make another cup of coffee, so. Anyhow, guys, thank you for hanging out. It's been a while since I've done a Meshuggah in the recycle. Uh, I have one more recycled track. No, I have two more. And then this week, uh, I'm going to do all new bands, uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Uh, so I have just tomorrow. I have today, Sunday, tomorrow, push a couple more recycles through, and then for the rest of the week, I'm going to be putting out all new music. So anyhow, thanks for hanging out. And um, yeah, I'm all, it's all late at night and I'm still drinking coffee. What you going to do? All right. <laughs>